sale of air rights. Uh, and I'm not sure I heard an answer from either of you. Yana? Again, I would like to see us be able to recover these revenue streams in the way that we're supposed to be. Like I said, the state of New York is supposed to be matching city revenue do city dollars for the upkeep of the Hudson River Park. I also want to look at what's happening in terms of the expenditures of the trust, and I'd like to look at those two options first before talking about selling uh, air rights. I'll answer the question. Uh, there are going to be air rights that are going to be sold. It's going to happen. Uh, I think we have to be very, very careful how it happens. It can only happen in certain places. It can't happen anywhere along the park. So it could happen just east of the park at Pier 76. It could happen just east of the park at Pier 40. And we have to make sure that when those air rights are sold, that it goes through the public approval process, the ULER process, in a way that actually works. That is one check we have on it, and I have to, and whoever the council member is has to make sure that whatever is done with that development, when those air rights are sold, it's done in a community-minded, community-focused way. All right. Um, we've uh, interviewed some other new uh, LGBT candidates across the city, and with you two, uh, one of the things that they've all mentioned is a concept that's been uh, used a lot out in Brooklyn um, and, and uh, up in East Harlem, and that's participatory uh, budgeting. Um, and it's, uh, it sounds great. Um, can each of you speak to how you would actually make that work and uh, why that would be uh, an important addition to what, uh, what you're doing for your constituents, Corey? Sure. So participatory budgeting, for folks that don't know, is a way to include local residents, communities, town and associations, PTAs, and actually being part of the budget process in New York City. As I said before, we have a $78 billion budget, and uh, it's a way to say you, the citizens of New York, should decide how some of those funds get spent. So in other districts, I believe seven council members right now are uh, have implemented participatory budgeting. Melissa Mark Viverito, uh, Brad Lander, and, and other folks. And what it does is it says that you know you get to come up with ideas on where the money should go. That you know better than elected officials. You know where there needs to be a park improvement. You know where there needs to be uh, more investment in the community, whether it be uh, at a school or at a senior center. And you come to the council member and to the community and say, let's all vote on this together. It's a process, it, it, it's in line with whatever the budget cycle is, and then it ends right when the budget's being adopted. I am fully supportive of participatory budgeting. I think it's incredibly exciting. I look forward to doing it when I'm in the council, and I think it's going to be a great thing for the people in this district. It's gonna get people more involved in government. It's gonna actually get people to understand the process, participate in it, and say this is how our money should be spent. It's very exciting, and in the communities where it's taken place, people have raved about it, and other council members are trying to get more folks to sign on board to actually do it. I also think that part of our $78 billion budget should actually be uh, held and allocated just for participatory budgeting. That currently isn't the case. Council members take part of their funds and put it towards participatory budgeting. I think the full city budget itself should have a chunk of it that's dedicated to participatory budgeting. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think participatory budgeting a great experience, uh, experiment. Uh, I would fully support it. I would employ it in the third city council district. One of the things that I want to do as a city council member also, I see constituency services as an important part of what we do as elected officials. And as I said earlier, I seek to be a true public servant. I want to have a district office that's like a storefront. Like I don't know if people are familiar with Gal Brewer in the sixth uh, city council district. She has like a storefront with windows open where she's inviting people to come in. I want to do that and, uh, and really involve people in a kind of community building, uh, bottom up grassroots approach to government in, in, in city council. And I see participatory budgeting being a part of that. Um, I think it does a couple of things really effectively. First of all, I think it invites people to get involved in the political process in very meaningful ways. Through that democratic process, it helps us identify what the most important projects are uh, and issues are for a community. I think it does something else that's really important uh, for elected officials handling $78 billion of taxpayer monies. I think it reminds those elected officials that that is not their money, it's your money, and they should use it wisely. Um, this has been a big issue in the...